Hello and welcome to Money Control. I am Kaizad Adajania and I have with me in studios today Mrin Agarwal. She is the founder and uh, CEO of FinSafe India. FinSafe is a financial educator which specializes in conducting financial literacy classes for women. Now, on occasion of Women's Day um, nearby, um, today we are going to be talking about a very, very important topic, a very crucial topic as to, uh, you know, how women should safeguard themselves and their uh, financial belongings in case of a separation, in case of a divorce. Now, I know it's a very morbid topic to talk on this day, but it's a very crucial topic and it's a very essential topic because at many times we've heard anecdotal evidences of women getting absolutely stranded financially in cases of uh, separation and divorce. So, Mirin, hi, welcome to our show. And, you know, the first question I wanted to ask you is this, that, um, you know, you have been conducting a lot of uh, financial literacy, um, uh, you know, uh, surveys, financial literacy classes, you speak to a lot of women. Um, in your sense, anecdotally over the years, uh, you know, how prepared are women as far as their finances are concerned? Are they enough, uh, prepared enough or do they need to do a lot more? Hello, Kezad. Um, well, you know, we recently conducted a survey amongst uh, working women professionals. Uh, most of them salaried employees, basically. And what the survey said was that 66% of the women said that uh, they're not sure if uh, they're prepared right now, you know, for their finances. And typically also when I do these sessions, then this is what I normally find that everybody is doing some something in bits and pieces. They are taking some steps. It's not like they're not doing so. But the general concern is that, am I doing the right thing? Am I... Am I investing right? You know, I'm, I'm, and am I really going to have enough or not? So that thought is certainly plaguing women in a very, very big way. Okay. In cases of separation, mm -hmm. Amrin, uh, you know, what can uh, go wrong for a woman financially? I mean, of course, there's the emotional trauma that uh, one has to go through. But as far as the finances are concerned, uh, which has a big impact on how the woman is going to lead the life going here on, uh, picking up the pieces financially what can go wrong and how oh, it can go a wrong? lot can go wrong you know so for example in most cases most of the women do not even know what is the money that the husband has and I remember this case uh, where a woman reached out to me and she was from a very very wealthy family they had like a really big business and in the beginning you know she was cringing to actually tell me that um, that she has no idea and she actually called to ask me can you please help me because my husband's asked me for a divorce after 30 years of marriage and I have no idea where do I even start looking and finding out about the finances and you know Kaisa it's very difficult right I mean where do you start looking because remember that the partner would have become that much more um, difficult and that much more secretive right and uh, she said that when she told him to split the money, um, he said, no, why should I do that? I'll take care of the daughter and her expenses. But why, why should I give you 50% of my money? Right. And she's been a homemaker through her life. So a lot of women face a lot of difficulties uh, during separation. The first one really being not knowing what the spouse has. And hence, when they actually get divorced, they really end up with nothing. Right. The second thing is to do, uh, there, there are also times when they don't even get the jewelry and this is so, so, so common because I hear young girls, you know, who are going through separation, maybe they've just had a couple of years of marriage, that they got married and they came and they shifted to another city and they were just told, Achha, hai, why don't you give me the jewelry and I'll just keep it in the locker for you, right, in my locker or, you know, it's kept in the mother-in-law's locker. And then finally, when they get to the stage, they can't even get, you know, their hands on that jewelry, which is actually three done, right? Because whatever you got during your marriage and whatever assets you required, acquired during your uh, marriage are actually three done and the right. rightful right of the woman, right? right? And point number three, this was a very interesting case where someone I met told me that, uh, uh, the, that she and her husband bought a house where they were joint owners and she has taken the loan. Um, but uh, they got divorced, he's living in the house and she's paying EMIs because in order to uh, close the loan, she needs an NOC from the husband. 
okay. right to get the documents back she needs an noc because he's a co owner so he needs she needs an noc from and there's him. a problem uh, in yeah. case there's yeah. a little separation yeah and so and you know these just multiply you know one thing start leads to another and then leads to a much bigger issue and the end of it really is that most women end up with very very little money or assets to rely on does this happen only when uh, or mainly when women are homemakers or does no. it also happen when the woman is working in the last and you get your finances entangled in the whole thing so badly that you now can't detach yourself the last uh, example that i gave you was of a working woman who loan. spent 20 years supporting the family okay the home loan yeah looking at these some of these uh, problems then you know uh, how should a couple invest their money i mean should you keep your investments separate should you keep your investments joint i mean obviously i mean you know everything starts off well and one hopes that it ends well but uh, you know just to be sure that things don't end up uh, in in such a nasty way how should you take precautions right at the start to make sure that yes you are both the uh, the husband and the wife are working towards common financial goals and individual financial goals also but should anything go bad it's easier for the woman to also separate and detach so what is the right form is there a right formula as to how a couple should invest their money jointly separately well i think yes and you know now uh, with divorce no longer being a taboo in india and you know of course you're seeing many more divorces and by the way uh, financial reasons are the number one reason for divorce in india incidentally right um so what i would say is that um firstly you need to have a common expense account where uh, both the husband and wife are contributing proportionate to their salary not equally and doing the common expenses which is let's say rent uh, kids school fees maybe insurance premiums whatever else is there you know living expenses on a regular basis you know let there be a common expense account right so this you're saying that needs it's it's better if uh, there's a common expense account where both the husband and the wife are contributing proportionate to their salaries yes okay. yes that's right the second thing is that um, you know it's very very commonly seen that a lot of women when they earn their income they just hand it over to their husband that you take care of it stop doing that right and again this, this is, is something that we hear ever so often <laughs> and we keep hearing that year after yeah, year yeah yeah and i think you know why, why you shouldn't do that is you know to protect yourself from this uncertainty right so as as you said you know while we hope that things end well in the event that they don't you don't want to be stranded without any money right and hence what i strongly believe is that whatever income the woman earns uh, she should invest it in her name sure you could do it as an either a survivor investment just to have that convenience uh, or you could do it as a single holder with a nominee and now you know with the emphasis that's there on nominees you could also do that whatever is more convenient to you uh, you know uh, money in the relationship is not an easy subject there are times when women don't want to share uh, about their uh, you know their finances with the spouse so i i leave it upon the woman to decide to either do it as either a survivor or as a single with nominee but very importantly she needs to be the prime holder or the first holder of the investment of the entire investment so i mean even if you are investing uh, with common goals yes okay. yes okay. yes uh something interesting that you also said in your uh, you know last comment about sharing the details so this is again another pain point that we hear that uh, you know uh, uh, no matter how close the couple might be there have been instances where the husband keeps uh, uh, you know his own investments his own uh, money dealings uh, uh, secret uh, you know because he might want to support his own uh, maternal family and the same yeah. comes from even the woman's side also yeah. so uh, again i mean to each his own but as a financial planner as somebody who have uh, counseled so many women over the years on financial planning is there a right formula or is there a right balance to strike but how much you want to share with your spouse could be a man as in could be a man with a woman or woman could be a man uh, yeah either with, way either yeah. ways is there a formula or um, i mean is it okay to do that is it okay to keep everything private well i mean certainly i think you should share it right i mean after all you are in this relationship and you want to be open about things you want to be honest in the relationship right so i think it's okay to share it but again you know i, I have met uh, women who feel that no i don't want to share this because if i share this information then maybe my money might be used for something that you know i don't want it to be used for so you know of course everything depends on the situation 
but you know uh, the the case where uh, the men do not like to share about finances with the spouse this is very very common in india by the way and many times people have attended my sessions and they've come back saying that when we approach the spouse to actually ask for information they said don't worry we're taking care about it right and they found some excuse or other not to share it like okay i'll tell you on the weekend or something this like that this usually happens when again the wife is a homemaker or even when the wife is early no typically it it could happen with anybody and the audiences that i address are typically uh, working professionals mm. so yeah it's happening with working women a lot mm. and uh, so a lot of these women tell me that they have then decided to just do their investments on their own and i think you know you and should and this happens even after the woman contributes the to the household finances and even then you know the whole affair is, yes. is kept secret yes absolutely okay. and and of course like you know i did counsel them that why don't you speak to the husband to say that uh, you know this is for my financial well being and you know take that line but honestly if that doesn't work and you're not getting the information then you have no choice but to then manage your money separately okay we see a lot of uh, hesitance in women also to manage their finances uh, what would you recommend to them on this uh, women's day i mean we keep repeating the same mantra again and again but we still keep seeing the same results again and again so uh, what's your message to women at large uh, why and how is it so important to manage your own finances and to understand where you're keeping your money yeah i mean look today you need money for everything right and if you want to have a good life on your terms then you need to have the money to do so right so that should be reason enough to manage your money well also remember that you know for for women with children for example with what your you want your children to have like a good education uh, and and today's this education doesn't come cheap right so in order to fund this education again you need to be saving up a lot of money in order to afford a good education today right and finally i would also like to say that uh, uh, you know men also need your support uh, it's very interesting we did a session for men uh, on uh, biases and you know most of the men actually came out and said that we feel very pressurized because we don't have support from women uh, you know we are expected to uh, ensure that all the financial goals are being met children are going to international schools so expenses are pretty high future goals are supposed to be met Uh, and they feel very pressurized as well so you know if you can contribute uh, financially to your household not just in terms of expenses but even in terms of decision investing making. yeah investing decision decisions. making helping your spouse make the right decisions maybe and also in terms of contributing towards those long term financial goals then i think you know you're also all leading a much happier life correct correct and um, again i wanted to turn your um, uh, attention to how you should share your expenses uh, we've heard also instances where um, you know certain part of household expenses are meant to be taken care by the husband certain part of expenses are meant to be taken care of by the wife uh, from their own salaries is that uh, 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 a formula which can work in the long run or uh, as you yeah i don't think so you know because what i see Is, somebody was saying that you know if you have if you have kids you know uh, let's say the kids education must can be maintained by either the wife and the household uh, groceries everything can be maintained by the husband so you are keeping your two expense lists separate but then the income is also uh, uh, i mean not the same right the expenses can go haywire so yeah i mean i don't i i don't agree with that you know because i have seen this too often that uh, m- most women end up uh, taking care of emis and expenses and the husband salary gets invested right so that's one situation that i have seen the second thing and is that's a strict no no that's a strict no no because imagine after 10 years you're going to end up with nothing right yeah. all your money and has you gone towards so expenses much. yeah yeah now you know on this whole aspect of you take care of certain expenses i take care of certain expenses it's fine if it's 50 50 but it's seldom 50 50 right right so i mean obviously you need to have the right balance right i mean thank you so much for your valuable insights lovely to have you with us thank you kaisa uh, thank you for watching money control for more new- news views and updates please log on to moneycontrol.com for more